Hello again YouTube. I recently had to take my TDM 900 for MOT, which means it must be the anniversary of my ownership. Um, I acquired it with 11,000 and something miles on it, and it's now done 21,000 and something, so approximately 10,000 miles in total. So now's probably a good time to give you, well, just give you my view on its ownership in that period. I bought the TDM 900, or I went looking for a TDM 900, based on my very favourable ownership experience of a TDM 850. Um, having said that, although they are obviously very similar, they are not the same bike. Um, they're a little bit like brothers. Um, I've got a brother, he's obviously my brother, but he's taller than me and he's lighter than me. And such is the comparison between the 850 and the 900. People will tell you that the 900 is a far superior bike. Um, I'm not sure the people that say that have owned the 850, because although the 900 is obviously a development, um, I found the 850, despite its extra weight, a lot more fun. But, let's not dwell on that. That doesn't detract from just how good the TDM 900 is. The first thing that strikes you when you get on it and you know, from new is just what a long way it is from where you're sat to instruments, idiot lights, bars, the fairing, etc, etc, etc. But you very soon accustom yourself to that uh, and it feels natural and normal in no time at all. You're leaning across what feels like a fairly big tank, which is one of the great beauties of this machine is the tank range. Um, I never feel I have to go looking for a petrol station until well in excess of 200 miles, which is kind of, it's, it's the utopia of, of, of touring machines and mileage machines, is that 200 mile tank range. And this does it with ease. The seat itself is very comfortable. Um, Yamaha do this clever thing where, despite the bike looking tall and actually being tall, the saddle is fairly narrow so that um, your legs are not sort of spread very, very wide, so you don't lose your inside leg. Um, so I can put both feet on the floor despite its height, uh, and then when you're off and away, the saddle is very comfortable. Um, and also the saddle comes up the sort of the front of you to the back of the tank which means your bits and pieces aren't resting against a steel tank full of fuel um, like they are on the SV1000. So your bits and pieces are not freezing on a cold day. The storage under that seat is pretty impressive as well. I mean, I get an awful lot of stuff in there. Um, <clears throat> oh, awful lot of stuff, uh, including uh, a spare headlamp bulb, which is uh, something which I needed recently, which brings me to one of the negatives, I suppose is the headlight on this machine is not particularly good. Um, also, it has that Yamaha thing where one headlight is dip beam, beam and the other light is high beam. And I am forever being flashed by people who seem to think that one of my headlamp bulbs has blown. Getting underway, um, I observed when I first got it and I've, I've continued to be impressed by the surprisingly good handling. Um, there's a little bit of suspension tweakage that is possible just to make things sort of comfortable and taut enough to, you know, keep your pin to the road. And as I say, it, it, it's yet to trip me up. I mean, I don't want to tempt Providence by saying that, but the handling has and is surprisingly good, as I say, with enough suspension adjustment for most people. I mean, these things are set up pretty well at the factory. Um, and there's you know, very little requirement to do too much, but there is enough. Through most of the rev range, it's reasonably vibe free. Um, although at the bottom end of its rev range, the fueling is a little bit rubbish. If you go trawling through the, um, the internet, you will find all manner of potential solutions for that. Um, in the early days of my ownership, I thought I might get on and do all that. But in actual fact, I found that you just kind of adapt your riding style to suit. Um, 
The engine almost feels like it's a long stroke engine, although actually it isn't particularly. Uh, in fact, as a ratio, you know, bore to stroke, it's a, a shorter stroke than the old 850 as they achieved the increase in capacity by simply boring it out. Um, so despite not actually being a particularly long stroke engine, it does feel like one and you do kind of ride it like one, where you sort of ride the torque a little bit and there's absolutely no point going over about 7,000 RPM because it just doesn't get you anywhere. But with the exception of the sort of the lower end, as I say, it's relatively vibe free, which means you're, you're not buzzing through your, your toes and your fingers uh, and the mirrors remain good uh, and the mirrors are very good. So it's just a, you know, <clears throat> it's a good place to be for covering distance. While you are riding around on it, uh, obviously it's necessary to look at all the display. Um, the display is really good, really good. Uh, I mean, a nice big central um, analog rev counter with a digital uh, LCD speedo, which is an arrangement I like. Um, I see it a lot on Suzuki's um, and I see it on other other models in the Yamaha range. I quite like it. Um, it's very much spirit of the age though. There's not a lot else going on. There's no there's no lap timers or there's no modes. There's no this, that and the other. But there is the usual stuff that you would expect. Um, over and above the rev counter and the speedo obviously. And there is a proper fuel gauge which is pretty accurate. And there are two trip meters. Although... Uh, it's more irritating than I thought it might be is that the trip meters themselves only go up to a thousand miles once you get to you know 999 it flips back to zero which uh, as I say is slightly more irritating than I thought it would be but it's a minor minor uh, negative in an otherwise positive experience the brakes are really good they're they're a variation of Yamaha's um, spot. I think they started off as blue spots, didn't they? And then they did a, you know, they did a silver spot and this, that, and the other. Um, I don't know whether the, you know, blue spot, silver spot are exactly the same. And they're just it, literally the colour that's different. I don't know. But these are breaks from that lineage, and they are really, really good, really good. Uh, I spend a lot of time on the back brake uh, on a bike like this. It's relatively. Well, it's relatively back-heavy biased. Um, I do a lot of traffic work, which means you're sort of filtering, so you're dabbing the back brake a lot. Um, feels really good. The front brakes are powerful with a nice bit of feedback through them. It is a fantastic machine, but it's not all positives. Um, there are a couple of elements which, which just, I don't know, leave a little bit to be desired. Um, on the TDM850, which I mustn't keep comparing it to, but I naturally will, on the TDM850, with the seat removed, there was a small post that pokes up, which um, acted as a helmet lock, so that the buckle of your helmet would be popped over the post, and then the seat refitting would retain it. Um, that is missing from the 900, and there is no other means of helmet lock. So you've either got to carry a sort of a padlock of some sort, in order to sort of, you know, secure it, or you've got to fit a top box so you can lock it away. Um, again, it's something that um, initially you don't really grasp, but once you sort of come to live with it, it's slightly more irritating than you than you realise. Um, the front tyre is an odd size, not a problem in itself, but it does significantly limit um, your choice of rubber. Now. I do see lots of people swap the front end out for an R6, which you know, gives you the, the different size and therefore a significantly greater choice. But um, if you live in somewhere like France, for instance, where type approval is a bit of a thing, that will lead to all sorts of problems for you. And also, you don't want to buy a bike and then start doing major changes such as front end swaps, just so you can put a new tire on it. Um, I've not found it a massive problem because there are tyres you can buy for it and they are reasonably okay but as I say it does limit your choice so if that's a, something you're worried about maybe do your homework before you commit. When you're doing your routine maintenance uh, one of the things obviously you would do is check the oil. This is unusually for a Japanese uh, machine this is a dry sump engine which means the oil is carried in a separate oil tank 
um, there are uh, some advantages to this system uh, in that the sump doesn't need to be so deep which means the engine can be shorter which can assist you with uh, you know creating a better sort of mass centralization when you're designing a bike um, and keeping the height down a little bit you know generally um, but despite having a separate oil tank and in theory the ability to put it almost anywhere Yamaha have gone to the trouble of putting it somewhere where it's very 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 difficult to gain access with a funnel and even your fingers to just pop the filler out and check the dip dipstick uh, again a minor consideration because you're not checking the oil every five minutes but you do do it routinely and every time you do it it makes you sort of you know sup and sigh a little bit but then on the plus side, you know, they do nice little touches like the heel plates on the foot peg hangers. I really like these. They, they just, they, the way they, I don't know, they seem to have got it absolutely right. I mean, other machines have heel plates on the, on the foot peg hangers, but somehow the ones on this and similar Yamahas somehow just seem better than everybody else's. Also, on the subject of routine maintenance, uh, the one thing that everybody should be capable of doing themselves is uh, checking, cleaning, lubricating and adjusting the chain. Um, that is most easily facilitated by a centre stand, and this bike doesn't have a centre stand, although uh, aftermarket ones are available. But, rather helpfully, the swing arm is already drilled and tapped to accept a pair of um, swing arm bobbins, should you require the use of a paddock stand for instance. So a kind of a negative for not having the centre stand but a positive because they kind of got round it. I don't want to finish on a negative but I kind of have to. Um, it cannot be ignored the turbulence from the, from the screen. Now the 850, which again I'm making a direct comparison, had a gap at the bottom of the screen at the front which meant that the air travelled over both sides of the screen and therefore the airflow was much much smoother. Now my machine is fitted with an MRA aftermarket screen so I'm not sure how that differs but I find that there is turbulence and, and what you can't do is get rid of the turbulence what you can do is change the speed at which it becomes an issue. Um, for me I've got it set you know in a nice compromise I spend a lot of time trickling through traffic where obviously there is no turbulence because you're not moving fast enough and I spend a lot of time wafting along at motorway speeds which this bike is very good at and, and I've, so I've got it set that there is no turbulence at that point um, but again if you were doing lots of lots of miles at different ranges you know speed ranges um, you, you need to be prepared to be shifting the little aerofoil at the top quite a lot. Um, but again, you know, it, it, is, it, is, it is a detraction from the, the overall experience, but it's not something that you can't overcome. So in summary, the riding experience is really good. It's a comfortable place to be. The saddle is luxurious. The reach to the bars is just right, and if it isn't quite right, you can rock them backwards and forwards to suit you as they are a traditional bar and can be moved slightly. The tank range is excellent, so if you're doing long journeys or, or even just the weekly commute and you don't want to keep having to stop for fuel, uh, you know, that's a real bonus having a decent tank range. Um, in a day and age when a 900 twin is not seen as a big bike, it is plenty fast enough for just about every occasion and it stops excellently as well due to Yamaha's brilliant brakes. The handling is surprisingly good and there are a number of little minor tweaks you can sort of do to, to make things you know suit you slightly better. So the overall experience is stopped from being excellent and is reduced to very good as it's let down slightly by that awful fueling at 3000 rpm ish. Um, can do something about that or you can ride round it but it you know it's very much there and it does slightly detract from the overall riding experience the overall ownership experience is pretty good too um, with the exception of the slightly awkward nature of the dipstick which is not unovercomable it is pretty straightforward to maintain this bike at home 
it weighs in at about 190 kilos dry, so it's easy to sort of wheel about the garage and move up the slight incline of the drive if you've got one like I have. Um, it sniffs fuel. I get about 70 miles to the gallon out of mine, which coupled with the decent sized fuel tank gives that impressive tank range that I mentioned earlier. Um, if you're interested in the numbers, it's chucking out 80 some odd brake horsepower, which doesn't sound very much. But actually, for a bike that's not particularly heavy, uh, and he's ridden sort of more through the torque band than the power band, um, you can hustle it along quite nicely. So, at about 190 kilos dry weight, you can wheel it out of the garage, just swing a leg over it and ride it. It's, it's agile enough to nip into town and wriggle through traffic. It will do the commute for you if you're that way inclined. Um, with sufficient weather protection for your chest, um, I have hand guards and heated grips on mine, so that's hands taken care of as well. Or you can do a little bit of scratching around some nice, nice nagery A roads and even B roads without any problem at all. Or stick some luggage on it and waft to the south of France in effortless comfort. It really will do it all, uh, and for my money, I think it looks quite good as well. I know beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but I really like the look of it. You know, I do, I look at it and go, yeah, what do you think?